It's your man, Andrew Wood, coming back, and I'm going to be talking about my favorite part of Mage the Ascension. That's right, the Nefondi. Now, the Nefondi walk the path of dark reflections. They are the opposite of what the Ascensions aspire to. They do not aspire to Ascension, but Dissension. And in fact, even that is misleading, for what they truly aspire to is the utter, complete, and total annihilation, eradication, unmaking of the Telerium, of the Tapestry, of reality, to unweave it. Now, what a horrendous, villainous thing that is, uh, until you consider what they have considered. Reality is imperfect, is ugly, is broken, is a horrendous thing that cannot be allowed to continue, and all of reality itself is merely samsara, an illusionary manifestation from the imperfect mind of a broken creator. No, something surely better can come than be painted upon the canvas than what we have now. So, when you think of that, and everything else really is just an illusion in the world, why not go for the most utter and complete extreme measures to perform your magic? After all, they are the most effective. Why bother with burning candles and waiting for the ninth full moon of the year, when you can just go down the street and slaughter Sally and cut her from head to toe, and pull her entrails out and work your magic right now? Why not? She, after all, is only an illusion. None of this matters. None of this is real. It does not have vivid reality behind it. It is just a broken sickness. And it needs to be cured. That, that is the philosophy of the Nefondi, and why they are willing to do anything that is most effective, that is most efficient. They simply do not care. They care as much about you as you do about something you don't believe has any value. Would you throw a group piece of trash upon the floor and set them on fire if it was going to give you a million dollars? Of course you would. And the Nefondi have once far more permanent than that. So, their means are irrelevant to them. This is why they can be interpreted so utterly extreme. That, and the fact that they have at some point made the journey to the Dark Labyrinth and set upon the coals of flesh and had their very souls ripped from their body, their avatars yanked out of their body, flipped around and put back inside inverted, which means they are the complete opposite of everything else. It is not a light, whimsical commitment to be Nefondi. You are Nefondi for life. And <laughs> life, and life, and life, and life, and life. You see, the Wunderslants, the Nefondi, who are born bad, they were ones who became Barabi, the ones who sell their souls, the ones who make the deals, the ones who have their souls inverted in a lifetime. They are, well, the followers of the technocracy or the traditions or wherever they came from that saw the grand reflection of the dark, spectered path, and they accepted it. They embraced it and they walked down it with full vigor and pleasure. But when they die, and they will, and when they come back, and they will, they become something even more hideous. They are the children that are born without a hope, for there is no salvation, there is no atonement, there is no repenting for this, for what they have done is worse than any sin any religion could have ever conceived of, for in world religions they do not teach you anything about yanking your very essence out of your body and inverting it, and becoming something spiritually the opposite of what you are. That is a very big key when playing a Nefondi. And I've played them a few times, and I like it. They're very interesting, incredibly in-depth, and often very, very nice. Uh, so you can really be quite close to other players. And when the trap is sprung, well, it's far too late then, isn't it? Yes, it is. They do not practice magic the same way the traditions do. They practice the Pulpothic paths, the dark reflection of the spheres most firmly shown through entropy. However, their spirit magic is a good bit different, too. The things they call up and play with, well, they do so out of sheer fright. 
of the other things. Yes, there are those things that would be horrendously scary to your eye, but to them are mere instruments to do their bidding. The devils, the demons, the ancient gods, all of these things are subject to their will. They are not afraid of anything. They have had their souls ripped out and put in backwards. They are as great a monster as you can imagine, for they did these things knowing and willingly. Many of them are forced to live beyond the horizon, the great wall at the very edge of the umbral worlds that keeps back the horrible, horrible things that live out in the outer darkness. And it is to those things that many of them pray. Yes, you have your garden variety Satanists. Yes, you have your individuals that worship those high astral concepts that we would call Lucifer or Aramon or any other fallen angel or dark god. They are all there accounted for. There are the followers of the worm, the followers of oblivion, praying to that utter primal force of entropy and serving its will as if nothing but fingers of these divinities. They are utterly, completely committed to the force of remaking the universe, of taking that sick thing that exists, that samsara, that illusionary state, and doing whatever they need to do to have it undone, for it offends them. The world, the existence, the entire universe, the Tapas Utrilirium, is offensive to them, and it must be undone. There are no measures that are too extreme, for nothing inside the box is even real. So do whatever you need to do to achieve the goal of unmaking it. After all, even if it was real, it won't be soon. That is very important to understand, an underlying principle that largely governs the various different factions. And you have those who become Nefondi in this life, those who were Nefondi in previous lives. You have those beneath them who are merely dark sorcerers, attempting to gain those hedge magic paths, attempting to dabble and dip their foot into the pool. And the Fondi are happy to have all of these pawns working for them, because they do, just like the devils and the demons and the other things, even the things that call themselves the Nefondi's masters, are very, very rarely correct. They are the true servants of corruption, the creatures that are responsible for so many of the horrors in the world of darkness. They can sort with Fomori, Black Spiral Dancers, Bali, all of these things. They can sort with them as masters. For a mage whose soul has been turned inside out is scary to even the greatest servants of the worm. The Nefondi practice uh, their craft differently. The rituals, you must understand, to portray a Nefondi in your game, whether it's a player character or as an NPC, must be unfathomably horrific, dredged into the deepest, most unwholesome part of your mind for coming up with ways to do it simply. You know, the routine human sacrifice can get quite a bit old after a while, and you will need to find more disturbing perverse methods in explaining the roots from which that Nefondi practices. It's very important to make sure that they leave the players feeling fucking scared. They should be portrayed as something that cannot be allowed to continue to exist. That is what you want to get across when you portray a Nefondi. But not at first! <laughs> because at first, you really want that Nefondi to seem beautiful, succulent, wonderful to be that man's man that every guy thinks is cool. That hot babe that every guy wants to fuck. That's in the fondy. They understand these trappings serve them best, and so they will do them. The fondies aren't going to act like ravaging imbeciles. No, no, no. They're the nice guy down the street that no one ever thought would start eating the local neighborhood children. That's in the fondy. The leader of your social organizations... Perhaps he's a priest in your local church or any other wholesome juxtaposition you can put with him to really throw in the uneasiness, the chilling things he does, and the fact that he has no remorse. He does not want to be caught. He does not want to be stopped. He does not want to repent. He is not sorry at all. And he is not afraid at all. And he is not wrong at all when you put those concepts all together and you add these horrendous occult trappings to them, the Nefondi can make the absolutely most terrifying villains 
you will ever face in any role-playing game. They are one of the true home runs from the World of Darkness line because they are insidious. And that is an excellent thing to have in the World of Darkness. For after all, when you are the dark reflection in the World of Darkness, how fucking black is your soul?